Greetings, my name is Ben DeVoy and I am the pastor at First United Methodist Church of Medford. And this is the worship service for the second Sunday of Christmas, January 3rd. But we're dropping the service on Saturday, January 2nd, because we want to encourage everyone who lives in around Medford to attend our drive-through communion on Sunday morning at 1030. You drive down Main Street past the church and take a left on mistletoe. We are safe. We wear our masks and practice social distancing. But it is a time for me to see folks, for you to see me. I give you a safe way to take up the bread and the cup. It's a sterile and to have a prayer with you. I hope you'll I hope you'll join us. Once again, I'll begin at 1030 and be out there until um, there's no more line. I do hope to see you. And also this coming week, we will resume our study on Wednesday at 1 with Facebook Live. Our book study is Christ in Crisis, and we are in Chapter 5. I hope you join us. Greetings. This is the ninth day of Christmas, January 3rd, and we are so happy you have come to join us wherever you may be watching. I have Barbara Brazier with me, and together we'll do the greeting. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen.
day spring come and cheer our spirits by thine hand disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadow Let us take a moment of silence to center ourselves for prayer. O God, who by the leading of a star revealed your Holy Spirit to the nations of the world, lead us to a clear vision of your presence and the nations into the way of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. As a Magi came from place far away to worship the Christ child. Open our ears to hear your call upon our lives and open our eyes to your presence in our daily lives. We offer to you all that we are, ourselves, our souls and bodies. We offer to you all that we possess, for all good things come from you. We offer you our joy and sorrows. We pray for all who walk in darkness and look for light, whatever the reason. And we pray for the church, that we would not be easily drawn away from you. Jesus, light of the world, give us light and peace. Lord, we pray for the leaders of the nations, presidents, prime ministers, rulers of all kind. May they work for the common good we pray in this time of world pandemic that the health of their people would be their primary concern. Jesus, light of the world, give us light and peace. O oh, good Lord, give light to health care professionals in this time of darkness. For doctors and nurses who have grown fatigued by the continued demands of the pandemic, we pray for their spirits. We pray for the health of their bodies and energy. And for all frontline workers who are face to face with the public each day, watch over them. For the people of this valley, that we would be mindful of the safety of others as well as our own safety. Jesus, light of the world, give us light and peace. For those who live in our streets in these cold winter months, may we work as a community to find answers for their shelter. For all who are sick of body, or mind, or spirit, may we find ways to be comfort and healing. For all who have lost their homes in our region because of recent fires, may we as a community pray and work for their recovery. And we pray for this church, O Lord. Help us to find ways to bind together even while we are not able to come together for our worship and fellowship. And keep before us your message so that when life returns to normal, we can say that we were in ministry to one another and a ministry for our community. Send us out to be the church, 
Jesus, light to the world, give us light and peace. And we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have begun a new year, a new year in the life of the church, and we look forward to the ministry of this church to our community in a time when the message of the church is most needed in word and deed. Let us give generously. If you'd like, you can give through our website. It's the address is there on the screen. Once again, thank you. Our Old Testament lesson and our gospel are both the Christmas theme. From Isaiah, we hear about the light that is to come. And then in Matthew, we hear about the Magi following that light, a star, that leads to the Christ child in Bethlehem. Thank you, Barbara. Right. This is our prayer of illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, and assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried in the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you, and to you riches of the nation will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ, the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, and this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. For we observed his star at its rising. The word his is where the trouble starts. I'll read the first lines of that passage again. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. Where is a child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Herod is king and the Magi have not come to see him. They've traveled into the city from some faraway place and they are spectacularly beautiful and regal. They are catching the attention of everyone in Jerusalem. They are the buzz and they haven't come to see Herod. Rather, they're looking for a baby, another king, the king of the Jews. For we have observed his star at its rising. The his refers, of course, to Jesus, the peasant Nazarene. The star doesn't belong to Herod, and neither does the attention. And for this reason, eventually in this story, all hell will break loose. Before I go any further, I, I like to say this about Christmas. I, I love a crash scene. I, I have, well, half a dozen at home. and. My favorite one, I keep on a bookshelf in the den where I can see it all year round. It's posted here on the video. This one I have here is from the Middle East. The scene is comforting to me. The baby Jesus cradled in a cozy wooden shed with Mary and Joseph on either side of him. The angel is above, balancing on the rooftop. There are shepherd and sheep, oxen too. And of course, there are, there are the Magi, the three of them in line, waiting to be kneel and worship the newborn king. Perhaps my mother should have known that I was destined to become a minister of the gospel because when she brought the Christmas decorations down from the attic, I was more interested in setting out the characters of the Bible story than decorating the tree. Christmas. I enjoy playing the sacred music and the carols that go with the season, and I really missed holding a Christmas Eve service this year. It is probably my favorite worship service of the year. Christmas has always been a comfort to me, even in those years that for some reason or another have become difficult. But it's important to know that there is another side to Christmas, another side to the story that we rarely talk about, and yet it's vital to the biblical message. And maybe more than anything else that is written in the Gospels, it tells why Jesus, the incarnate, came to live among us. And it goes to the core of God's purpose, and why Jesus was willing to pay such a high cost, the cost of hanging on a cross. The Bible passage that Barbara read this morning is only half the story. And the crash scene for Christmas is only the first act. Yes, there is a star in the sky that leads the way for the Magi to bring their gifts to the newborn savior of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there's also Herod the Great, who by official title is a Roman client king of the emperor, the Herodian kingdom, which by the name says that this was Herod's territory. This was Herod's kingdom. And the problem, of course, is that the gifts weren't for him, and neither was the homage. 
This other half of the story is a story where babies are slaughtered in and around Bethlehem, and the Holy Family has to flee from their home, and they become political refugees in a foreign land in Egypt. Matthew quotes from a similar story in the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. It was a terrible start to a life. And of course, Jesus is never truly safe. About 32 years later, the tyrant won't be one person, but it'll be a crowd whipped up in mass hysteria by the priests and elders of his own religion. And it will take him to Golgotha. What to do with evil? What to do with the evil that is in this Christmas story? I, I think of a familiar Christmas song I heard my mother playing on the hi-fi. Yeah, the hi-fi, it was a long time ago. Sung by, well, sung by Bing Crosby. I heard the bells on Christmas day, their old familiar carols play. And wide and sweet the words repeat Of peace on earth, good will to men and women. I thought as now the day had come The belfries of Christendom Had, long so, had rung so long The unbroken song Of peace on earth, good will to men and women. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and marks a song of peace on earth, good will to men. For hate is strong and marks a song. Doesn't it seem that way sometimes? Doesn't it seem that way? And yet we don't worship Herod. Herod's power ended 2,000 years ago after he died, as it does with all tyrants and all hate-filled movements. It was the man on the cross that we still worship. It was not the one born in the palace, but in a cattle trough. It's not the one that had command of armies but had a band of roaming fishermen, tax collectors, and a former prostitute. It isn't Herod's message that stuck. Oh, I know, for hate is strong and marks a song. But it's not what finally wins. Herod the Great is a tyrant. And he's, he's not a mythical tyrant. There, is a real Her there was a real Herod and still Herods have come and gone. The real thing, experienced by nations throughout their histories. The gospel doesn't fill in the details of Herod's reign and his raging paranoia, but he killed many people who he saw as threats, including his second wife, Miriam I, and three of his own sons. And, and I can't help but read this story as a message about power, when power becomes depraved and fearful, and what it will drive people to do, and the contrast of the power that Jesus spoke of and lived. Jesus was a very different kind of king, and yet that kingship still lasts. As a young adult in seminary, way back in the 1980s, I recall writing a paper for one of my classes stating that evil was not a power in itself. I kind of feel silly about that paper now. I said that evil could be traced down to bad decisions made or people hurting people or people simply getting caught up in destructive behaviors like obsessions and addictions. And while all that is true, I've come to believe in my years now that evil is a force and, and, and I can't say much more than that because I really don't know much more than that. But it is a force. And it's a force that people of faith are called to overcome, to defeat in some way, not only in the world but in ourselves. 
And I believe that Jesus came to help us do that. And he came to help us do that in an entirely different way. Not by guns and warfare, not by angry tweets and strident posts on Facebook, not by violence and raw power, but by kindness of all things, by goodness, overcome evil by love, by truth, by always, always speaking the truth. I didn't believe in an evil force until I had the good fortune of working alongside a Cambodian pastor not long after I graduated from a seminary. I was young. We shared a church facility in the inner city. My congregation was mostly older adult, middle class, white folks, and his was refugees. He had fled the Khmer Rouge in his leader, Pol Pot. And he eventually landed in a refugee camp in Thailand. Everyone in his family died. He was the only survivor. To know Samuel Om is to know his story and to see his limp that he lives with to this day from malnutrition, from that period of his life. What did he say about evil? He said that evil exuded an energy he found hard to describe. Yet it also seemed empty to him, like a vacuum. He told me that evil had done its work on his nation and left it a wasteland of hurt and turmoil. But it was empty. It reminds me of a sermon I once heard preached by Barbara Brown Taylor, someone who I have admired through the years. She tells of marching in a rally to honor Martin Luther King many years ago. She's an elderly woman now. The march was held in rural Georgia, where she was a pastor, the pastor of an Episcopal church. The KKK was amassed in a gathering at an intersection up ahead and standing there before the marchers for peace. And she was one of those clergy leading that march and was anxious, afraid, and very concerned. Until she got close up and looked into the hooded face of one of those men and saw an emptiness, a vulnerability, and fear. And the running emotion within her for him was really pity. Evil is a force. And the longer I live, the more I see evil power over good, the strong exploiting the weak, the bad guys crowding out the good whether in the present or in the annals of history. I see the Proud Boys taking up residence in a hotel in Washington, D.C. because they feel empowered. I see children still not being able to find their parents along the Mexican-American border. But I know that the story ends with resurrection. The story ends with an empty tomb. I know that in the story before us, Joseph is told to flee and to find a safe place. And the Magi are told to go home by another way. I know that while power can be horrendous, in the right hands, power can be good. Power can give second chances. It can feed hungry people and provide jobs. Good power keeps enlarging the table so that more people can gather around it. I know that unlike evil, love is not emptiness but fullness. And that all of us, all of us, every single one of us, desire of this love, even while we might fight against it and reject it. And one day, we will be overcome by that love and be renewed by it. That's the story we have to tell. Then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to men and women. On entering house, 
they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. They paid love homage. And they opened their treasures chests, and they offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Look up, love. Take your eyes off the ground. Show your face. A new day is here. The light is rising over you, shining brightly, moving shadows, touching your face. You are brilliant with it. Darkness may come and go, but the glory of our Creator is a constant companion, a steady light. Many will see you struggle to live, your choice to stand up and walk in the light, and be changed. Have the courage to truly see not only the problems, but the one who remains with you holding the light. We are all coming together, family, neighbor, and exiles, taking our seats at the table. We are learning, we are healing, so take the gift of this day you are given, let the light enlighten you, emanate from within you, become you, be you. Power is shifting, and it won't look like what we think when love reigns. Cities riddled with the wreckage of war and marked by the scars of empire will exchange the sounds of violence and ruin for the clamor of co-creation and communion. Through the power of God, the oppressed and those stripped of their land are allowed to share in power. We all will weigh in. Life will grow from the most unexpected places. The smallest and least will be welcomed into the center, and their perspective will matter. Not only will violence cease, we won't want to hurt one another, but cooperate for the goodness of all. The whole nature of creation will change. The sun and moon will not be the light we revolve around. We will turn and grow by the light of God that shows us the illumined way to go. We will be ruled by the power of love. We will be remade and refastened to God and one another. We will learn what harmony means. Look up, love. Take your eyes off the ground. Show your face. A new day is here. The light is rising over you, shining brightly, moving shadows, touching your face. You are brilliant with it. Everything wrong side up is being upended. The table is extending, rounding. You have a place that is only yours. And everyone, everyone, everyone at this table will have more than enough. So, stand up. Open up. Take it all in. And shine.
The season of Christmas ends on this Sunday, but the story, the gospel, the good news continues throughout this coming year. So go now with the love of God over you, Jesus beside you, and the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. Mm -hmm. 